Hi, welcome to Sunil Maths Tutorial Functional Analysis Class Number 38. In this video, we learn a theorem. Let us see the statement of the theorem. If capital M and N are closed subspaces of a Hilbert space capital H, M and N are closed subspaces of a Hilbert space capital H, such that M is perpendicular to N, then M plus N is also closed. It means M plus N is also closed subspace of Hilbert space capital H. Let us see the introduction part. Let H be a Hilbert space and M, N both are closed subspaces of capital H such that they are perpendicular to each other. It means M is perpendicular to N. Our aim is to show that M plus N is also closed subspace of capital H. Right. To prove this, first we show that M plus N is linear. First we show that M plus N is linear and then we show that it is closed subspace. To prove this M plus N is linear, let us take two elements z1 comma z2 which belongs to m plus n which belongs to m plus n z1 comma z2 are two elements of m plus n so this m plus n is sum of two sets then z1 can be written as x1 plus y1 z2 can be written as x2 plus y2 where where both x1 comma x2 are elements of m y1 comma y2 are elements of n now consider any two scalars for any two scalars alpha comma beta for any two scalars alpha comma beta consider alpha z1 plus alpha z2 alpha z1 plus beta z2 not alpha alpha z1 plus beta z2 it is equals to alpha into what is z1 z1 means x1 plus y1 so alpha into x1 plus y1 plus beta into z2 x2 plus y2 now simplify this alpha x1 plus alpha y1 plus beta x2 plus beta y2 rearrange let us rearrange the terms alpha x1 and beta x2 so that can be written like this alpha x1 plus beta x2 and the remaining elements alpha y1 plus beta y2 that's it we rearrange the terms suppose let it be some x and plus let it be some y where x equal to alpha x1 plus beta x2 and y is equals to alpha y1 plus beta y2 it is very clear it is very clear x1 comma x2 are elements of m and alpha comma beta are scalars and m is a closed subspace m is a closed subspace of Hilbert space then obviously alpha x1 plus beta x2 belongs to capital M it means this x belongs to capital M this x belongs to capital M so in a similar manner this y belongs to N similarly similarly y belongs to capital N x belongs to M and y belongs to N x belongs to M and y belongs to N it means it means that x plus y belongs to m plus n belongs to m plus n if x plus y belongs to m plus n what is x plus y this x plus y is nothing but alpha z1 plus beta z2 alpha z1 plus beta z2 belongs to m plus n this shows us m plus n is linear m plus n is linear subspace of h 
linear subspace of H. Now we wish to show that this M plus N is closed. Next we show that next we show that this M plus N is closed. Closed subspace of capital H. To prove that M plus N is a closed subspace of capital H, we define a limit point. Let Z be a limit point. Let Z be a limit point of M plus N. Let Z be a limit point of M plus N. If Z is a limit point of M plus N, then there exists a sequence Zn, then there exists a sequence Zn of vectors, then there exists a sequence of Zn of vectors of M plus N such that the sequence Zn converges to Z as N tends to infinity. This is from the limit point definition. Z is a limit point of M plus N then there must be a sequence Zn of elements of M plus N such that the sequence Zn converges to Z as N tends to infinity. So right, as N tends to infinity. Here, now you observe that Zn is a sequence. Here, Zn belongs to M plus N. Zn belongs to M plus N. So obviously, this Zn can be written as sum of two elements, Xn plus Yn. Xn plus Yn, where, where this Xn belongs to capital M and Yn belongs to capital N. Xn belongs to M and Yn belongs to M. So right. Now, take any one more element. Take Zn comma Zm are two terms are two terms of the sequence of the sequence Zn then then this Zn is equals to Xn plus Yn and Zm is equals to Xm plus Ym where the first elements where the first elements Xn comma xm they belongs to m yn comma ym they belongs to capital n now we subtract the elements one one another zm minus zn zm minus zn zm minus zn so it can be written like this xm plus ym minus xn plus yn by rearranging the terms you can write like this xm minus xn plus ym minus yn after rearrangement after rearrangement here this term is in capital m and this term is in capital n remember that by data by data this m is perpendicular to n this m is perpendicular to n it means they are perpendicular to each other means m and n m and n are having m and n are having m and n are having only only zero as common element zero as common element remember this point the set the set m is perpendicular to n it means they have only one common element that is also zero element they have only one common element that is also zero element remember this point here xm minus xn belongs to capital m yn minus ym belongs to capital n it means it means <coughs> it means xm minus xn perpendicular to ym minus yn that is the point xm minus xn perpendicular to ym minus yn because m is perpendicular to n now apply the pythagoras theorem by pythagoras theorem by pythagoras theorem 
norm xm minus xn plus ym minus yn whole square plus norm xm minus xn plus ym not plus it is minus minus ym minus yn whole square is equals to norm xm minus xn whole square plus norm ym minus yn whole square in another words in another words it can be written like this norm x plus y norm x plus y in another words it can be written as norm x plus y plus x minus y whole square plus norm x plus y minus x minus y whole square is equals to norm x square plus norm y square instead of these two terms we have the sequence sequential terms xm minus xn plus ym minus yn whole square plus xm minus xn minus ym minus yn whole square is equals to norm xm minus xn whole square plus norm ym minus yn whole square so by applying pythagoras theorem here to our problem it can be simply written like this norm zm minus zn whole square is equals to norm xm minus xn whole square plus norm ym minus yn whole square let it be equation number one right we know that since since the sequence zn converges to z as n tends to infinity the sequence zn converges to z as n tends to infinity we know that we know that every convergent sequence is a cauchy sequence every convergent sequence is a cauchy sequence this shows us the sequence zn is a cauchy sequence the sequence zn is a cauchy sequence if zn is a cauchy sequence it means norm zm minus zn whole square tends to zero as m comma n tends to infinity because of zn is a cauchy sequence so this condition implies as norm xm minus xn whole square plus norm ym minus yn whole square tends to zero as m comma n tends to infinity from this equation one because norm xm minus xn whole square is equals to norm xm minus xn whole square plus ym minus yn whole square so you observe that here the square the sum of the squares of two terms tends to zero the sum of the squares of two terms tends to zero it means individually the terms also tends to zero norm xm minus xn whole square tends to zero norm ym minus yn whole square also tends to zero as m comma n tends to infinity this condition shows us the sequence xm either xm or xn you can write any one the sequence xn and the sequence yn are cauchy sequences the sequence xn and yn are cauchy sequences in capital m and n respectively they are cauchy sequences xn is a cauchy sequence xn is a cauchy sequence in capital m yn is a cauchy sequence in capital n and remember that the fact hilbert space capital h is complete hilbert space capital h is complete and m comma n are closed subspaces m comma n are closed subspaces of capital h it means it means m and n are also complete are also complete by the definition of complete every cauchy sequence in it converges it means every cauchy sequence in capital m and n 
are convergent it means the sequence xn the sequence yn are convergent in capital m and n respectively so they are convergent so x the sequence xn converges and the sequence yn converges so that is you can conclude like this the sequence xn converges to x and the sequence yn converges to y as n tends to infinity now this z can be written as limit n tends to infinity zn which is equals to limit n tends to infinity zn means xn plus yn it means it can be written as it can be written as limit n tends to infinity xn plus limit n tends to infinity yn which is equals to x and the second one is y so z is equals to x plus y here this x belongs to m and y belongs to n therefore x plus y belongs to m plus n therefore z belongs to m plus n we define that this z is a limit point of uh, we define that z is a limit point see, see here z is a limit point of m plus n so z is a limit point of m plus n and z lies in m plus n so we conclude that the limit point the limit point of m plus n lies in m plus n this shows us m plus n m plus n is a closed subspace is a closed subspace of capital h from this theorem we conclude that the sum of two closed linear subspaces of a hilbert space is again a closed linear subspace that's it keep learning in the next video we learn one more theorem